Jupiter Broadcasting presents this show in mega stereo sound. This episode of the Linux Action Show brought to you in part by GoDaddy.com. Use the promo code Linux and save yourself some cash. And of course, from donations of people that are... It's like people get donated, you know? And it's free. It's free. It's tax. It's tax exempt. No, it's not. No. When you donate people, it is. It's tax. Right. You can't, Chris, you can't put a worth on person. This week on the Linux Action Show, we've stayed up all night by the light of fire, armed with only our amazing intellect to load Mego on all the various devices we can get our hands on. Find out if Mego is the platform of the future or yesterday's bad joke. Then Linus lays the smack down on Fedora, and we cover April Fool's jokes from open source projects all around the web. Plus so much more. Oh, this week on the Linux Action Show! And welcome to Season 16, Episode 3 of the Linux Action Show. My name is, of course, Brian. That guy next to me, that's Chris. Well, hey there, Brian. Check this out. This is one that was sent to me on Twitter by SaxCore, at SaxCore, and his Oscar-winning workplace runs Linux. What? Yeah, they did uh, almost all of, uh, at least according to their site here, the visual effects for the movie The Inception. Which really? I, I really enjoyed the In- Inception movie. And check this out, dude. It's, uh, it's called, uh, his company, I believe, is named Double Negative, and their visual effects work was honored at the 83rd Annual Academy Awards, uh, and they, they won the visual effects award for, yeah. or Christopher Nolan's, yeah, they won for the movie, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, Double Negative provided the visual effects on the move, uh, on, the, in the, on the film, including Limbo City, that's the one where the city like curls up. rolls up, up on top yeah, of itself. Kind of that, that was famous, pretty rad. Yeah, all done on Linux. And it sounds like, now, I, I got to I gotta really? tweet him back. I didn't want to tip my card, so I didn't tweet him ahead of time. Yeah. But I'm going to try to follow up with him. I'd love to talk to him on the show. Dude, that would be rad. I don't know what he can say, but I'd love to just chat with he him. He can tell us what distro it was. I, that's, I'd kind of like to know that. I'd like <laughs> okay. to know, like, is he just talking the render servers, or is he talking the desktop stuff? Like, like are, are we talking the full, like, 3D modeling pipeline? I think so, because with, he like, said... Like, Blender and Maya He or said my like workplace, and he's a last viewer. So my, my mm. inclination is, is that it's probably his whole workplace, uh, which is really awesome. Dude, so really, if, if those dreams were running Linux, what we're really talking about is like maybe a KVM or something like that. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah and, then, and then if you have another virtual then, machine, like a virtual uh, box inside like a KVM. Box or something like that. Boxes and then maybe you and, have like, so maybe you have yeah. KVM and a virtual box machine inside that KVM. And then in there you have QMU. Yeah. And in there you have like that, what was that really old? Was that box? Boxes, yeah, boxes, yeah. 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 And then inside of that, KVM. <laughs> and it's in a loop. <laughs> Fantastic. And it goes slower and slower and slower. <laughs> it did. Now let's talk. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what we got going up because at the end of last week's show, yep. we mentioned uh, we're we're going to be hitting Linux Fest hard this year. Hard. Linux Fest Northwest, and that's in Bellingham, Washington, April thirtieth and May first. So it's yeah. the last the last Saturday of this month of April, and then the following first day of the next month. It's very complicated, but if you look at a calendar, it starts to make sense. Mm-hmm. And we're cool. going to be there with our own room, and not yeah. just. Our own room. Yeah. A really big damn room. And we want you guys to show up. So we're gonna it's gonna be the Linux action show in person. We're gonna have cameras there. We're gonna be streaming it live. So even if you can't make it, hopefully you can tune at any point during the Linux Fest core hours and you'll find us there streaming something. And we're gonna try to snag people and bring them in, whatever we can sort of reach out and whoever we can contact. It's gonna be awesome. I mean, yeah. we are right there. Yeah. There's a big expo floor. And then right next to it, huge, huge room. Mm-hmm. And That's our room. If you could make it, go uh, go to linuxfestnorthwest.org for details. And also we have uh, links in our show notes for more information because we want to see you guys there. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. we're So the plan right now is we're going to be doing a, a fully live Linux action show with a full live audience. Uh, you know, we're going to be filmed in front of a live studio audience. That's, right. That's going to be kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. And we're going to have open mics, so... Gonna be neat. It's going to be way neat. We're hoping to maybe have like a special episode that weekend too. We're still kind of figuring out all the plans. We'd love to hear any feedback you guys have on that. And if you see any sessions 
at Linux Fest that you want to see live streamed, at, you know, through jblive.tv, mm -hmm. uh, go over to the forum at jupitercolony.com. Let us know. There's, a, there's already a thread in the Linux Action Show uh, section there. Mm -hmm. uh, just jump right in there, you know, give us some links to some of the sessions going on, and we will do our darndest to yeah. make sure it happens. We yeah. don't have total control. Nope. I mean, we're not the end-all, be-all. We're just super go awesome the and in the big room. If there's so. somebody you want to talk to, let us know, and we'll try to get a hold of them. Awesome. Now, uh, before we go on, of course, all of this is always made possible by the good folks over at thegodaddy.com. Thank Ryan. you, Danica Patrick. Now, Danica, Danica is a big fan of the open source. Did you do you know? I think it was about two years ago. Uh, GoDaddy donated about twenty thousand dollars to the Apache Foundation. Wow, that was nice of Danica. That was very nice of Danica. Probably one of her many wins. And if you go to GoDaddy and you're going to buy a domain, you can use our promo code Linux to save yourself ten percent when you check out, or Linux twenty save twenty percent when you check out. That's also pretty handy. You know what I mean? Man, hey, do you know I what? ever. There's one really kind of cool aspect over at GoDaddy. Is when you're in there, if you go in and you have a lot of domains, you can bring them up in one spot, and they have this thing called the Advanced DNS Zone Manager. Yeah. Oh, man. That's pretty I cool. I was setting up C names the other day, lickety split with that thing. It's like type, 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 click, lickety apply, split done. Lickety split C names. Yeah. So That's, they're going to rename the whole thing to lickety split C names. There you go. Yeah. So big thank you to GoDaddy for their long time support of the show because really... They, they grease the wheels here for this show to get out in the air and tell you. We could not that. have the Linux Action Show like we have it right now without GoDaddy support. No, we, That's awesome. We would probably have to do it in black and white if they weren't around. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We, we, just be able to, we yeah. wouldn't be able to afford the colors, man. We'd, we'd have to do it all in black and white. All right, so I've got a, two Android picks for you Can this you week. Can you imagine how horrible that would be? Oh, man. It would just destroy every... Actually, that'd be really rad. It would be like an epic old school... No, magenta. Like old school... Hold on, school. Brian. Don't tip our hand. We might have a future April Fools in the works here. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, with like, with like some crackly images yes, and whatnot. Yes. Little do ding 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 Did you, you know? see YouTube did that? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, a pretty they, cool way yeah. to go. Now, okay. Here's... I got a couple Android picks for you. Now, this, this almost says something. Last Sunday, my Android pick was the Amazon App Store, right? Yep. Wasn't that it? Which is pretty cool. This week, Amazon didn't just sit around. They relaunched a new streaming service, which has a lot of different elements to it. But one component is they updated their Amazon MP3 application for Android. And that update adds that cloud streaming capability for free right into the Android device. Kind of neat. So Awesome. So one nice thing about Amazon's MP3s is that they're DRM free. Right? Yeah. And now when you buy them, you have an option to have it send a copy for free to your cloud drive. Now, let's be clear. The fact that you can buy MP3s and have them be DRM free from Amazon is like five different nice things all at once. Yeah. That's like mega yeah. nice. Yeah, that is. And then the fact that when you buy it, you can still opt to have a download and have a copy sent to your cloud drive That's without really cool. a storage. There's no storage penalty for any, M any music you buy from Amazon. Really? Yeah. And now you can also buy from the Amazon MP3 app on your Android. You can be sitting here browsing around. You can buy... Instead of downloading to your Droid, which probably you know is on a battery, maybe on cell connection, mm. you can have it instead from the Amazon MP3 app on to your stream. Android, have it automatically populate the cloud drive and stream. Oh, that's cool. And then when you get home, you can download it to your computer. That's pretty cool, actually. So the cloud, the, the cloud player, is it's, it's, you get five gigs for free anyways, even if you don't use their MP3 service. So if you just want to upload five gigs of your music, then the Amazon MP3 app, which is free in the marketplace, will be yep. able to stream that to you. That's really cool, there actually. There you go. So maybe if you yeah. have, like, I am like almost completely out of storage on my Evo. I've got, like, I don't know what I did. I got to go on there and, like, with a machete and clean house. But, you know, being able to stream solves that problem. I'm, I'm actually just about out of storage on my N900, but that's because I've been trying to get Mego working <laughs> on it. And uh, so I've got Brian, all my SD Brian, cards taken Brian, up. Brian, we're going to review that. making me angry. Brian, okay, that's I'll for later. We're going to review that later. I'll put it down. Oh, oh. Oh, but guys, pretend like you have no idea what I'm going to think about it. Uh, so that you have a lot of anticipation. Wait, get, get, it, get it all riled up. You dude, know I do not want to forget this. Uh, before we go on, I've got one more Android pick, but it's only going to apply to a couple of you. So uh, before people finally before people check out, I want to remind. Actually, no. The I, only, Chris is about to throw out the only Android pick that I actually ever would care about. Well, before, but before before I mention it, I want to mention something else because Gosh. I don't want to forget this. All right, you remember the B three server we did. Of course I you do. Remember they're doing giveaways. There's details about that in the last episode of Linux Action. Which is ri ridiculously fantastic. Not everybody's going to win a giveaway. That's just how it works. Which is the saddest possible Probably thing one I can person. think of. Yeah. Right? Now, here's the other thing. is That stupid jerk for being the winner. And when, you, when I'm on eBay, you know what I do? I sort by buy now. Always. I, I, I don't want to play that game. So uh, the B3 guys, I think they know that uh, and appreciate that. Uh, they, they contacted me and said, hey, how about we got a lot of interest from the Linux Action Show. How oh. about we run a discount for Linux Action Show viewers? Well, wouldn't that be fantastic? That would be really cool. So uh, it's it's not it's not a, it's like not a huge discount, but it's uh, seventy one bucks off. Actually, that's pretty good. 
Seventy one bucks off USD or fifty euro discount. Uh, if you email discounts at Excito, that's E X C I T O dot com. Uh, tell them with the exact model you want, and they'll give you the Linux Action Show discount. That's awesome. That is awesome, right? The, the special Linux Action Show discount. You save 71 bucks in U.S. Yeah. dollars. Yeah. So you can buy yourself a B3, and then to celebrate, go out that night, buy yourself a nice dinner and a yeah. couple of beers. There you go. Boom. Or, uh, you know, <clears throat> send us five bucks. I don't know. Uh, so Vendetta Online, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Now, this doesn't work. It says, here's the thing. Here's the caveat. I've heard from some of you. I know you got Zooms, so I'm putting this in here for you. It says it only requires Android 2.2 and up, which my Galaxy Tab has, and it says it works on 7-inch screens, which my Galaxy Tab has. It will not install on my Galaxy Tab. It doesn't nope. even show up in the marketplace. No, it shouldn't. But it does work on the Zoom, and you can see videos and stuff, and what it is, it's Vendetta Online, the space shooter MMO on the... On Android. On an Android tablet. A, on Android The full-on... The full game. Vendetta Online. The full thing. Maybe with some control differences, but the full freaking game that's that uh, a space a space mmo on a tablet sounds like win now i'm gonna be clear on this this is a really good game this is an exceptionally good game it's been around for years and years we've talked about it a long time ago mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh but it's honestly one of my favorite games and the fact that it's available now on a nice yeah. portable device is stellarly cool yep, yep. so cool i and mean i have not played it so i can't say how well the tablet controls work because i use it with big like joysticks and thrusters and everything vendetta but online is of course also so available cool. for the linux desktop yeah as well as, and uh, some of your other stupid distros that you might use or some stupid os stupid os yeah. yeah lots of lots of linux love no comment there on on those but uh, yeah. very neat right lots of linux so if love. you get a chance because you know of course that's that is definitely a checkbox in the do I want an Android tablet that runs Honeycomb box. So if you've got one, I want to hear from you because honestly, the feedback I'm hearing about the Motorola Zoom is bad. I heard I heard uh, from a, a fellow Linux podcaster. Yeah. Uh, he said it's just been atrocious. I've been hearing a lot of crashy, crashy. Yeah. So if you've yeah. got one, let me know because right now I'm thinking avoid, avoid, avoid. Which is I'm thinking mad. So. so. Yeah. Plus I'm mad at Honeycomb with the whole thing, but let's we'll talk about that later, Brian. Because you know what? Put that out of your head for a second. Let's do the news. What's new in the news this week? All right, Brian. Linus Torvalds, father of the Linux kernel, <laughs> breaks out his mother effing pimp hand and lays the smack down Ooh. on the Fedora team. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'll just read you this. Here's the. Just read it to me. Here's I'm just going to close my eyes. I'm going to feel it. Now, I'll keep everyone keep this in mind. This is over a nice little conversation mm -hmm. regarding MP3 playback in Flash yeah. on the Fedora desktop. Yeah. Now, this really isn't a groundbreaking story, no. but it's fun to see the human conversations that take place in open source development. It sure is. All right. Okay, read it. So uh, I'm here's, giddy now. Here's Linus's Torvald's response to somebody who kind of gave him an answer he didn't like. He yeah. says, quite frankly, I find your attitude to be annoying mm. and downright stupid. Mm. How hard can it be to understand the following simple sentence? Ready. The user doesn't care. Oh, yeah. Pushing the blame around doesn't help anybody. The only thing that helps is Fedora being helpful, not being obstinate. Ooh. Also, the fact is... From a QA standpoint, MCP that just does the right thing is simply better. Quoting standards is just stupid. When there's two simple choices, it works or it doesn't work because bugs happen. Oh, that felt good. He goes, so really, this is just, uh, th here's what happened is it was somebody submitted a bug that MP3 playback didn't sound right under Flash Player in certain conditions on yes. Fedora. And it was related back to uh, some of the optimizations, optimizations they made uh, to memcopy. Yeah. And so, and then it gets down to, well, maybe Flash doesn't do something the correct way when it's cleaning itself up or something like that, right? Sure. So they go back and forth and basically Fedora's stance is, is well, why should we implement something that's maybe not correct when it's really a problem in Fedora's or in, in Adobe software? Linus comes back and says, well, look, they're not changing it. They never have changed it. And your users are having a bad experience and you have the means to fix it. So fix it. And then it goes, it just devolves to from fix there. it easily is the and, real key. And this is a common problem, and it's actually not that really, it's not honestly that big of a deal, because you nope. need to walk that line between idealism and practicality. Yeah. You, you can't always, always go too far one way. You always gotta walk that line. You gotta, so, you gotta have an eye to both at all times. But you gotta feel like no matter who you are in the Linux open source development world, when, when, when Grandpa Linus stops by and tells you how it is. You shut the F up and you listen. Yeah. You listen, you punk fedora kids. <laughs> Linus funny. told you to do something, you do it. That's right. That's right, Brian. Now, us, 
we can go around here all the time and be like, blah, 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 fedoras are a bunch of retards, whatever, whatever but we're we not say. Linus Torvalds. But we're not Linus Torvalds. You don't have to listen to us. In fact, you don't. Whatever we do, you do the, whatever we say, you do the opposite. <laughs> That's what Fedora does. But when Linus says something yeah. and we agree with him, you have no choice but to do exactly what Linus says. That's mm. just the way it goes. End of story. Well put, sir. You have been served, Fedora team. All right, let's talk about uh, our next story. because It wasn't really that big of a serving, but I'm going to take what I can get today because it feels good. You need it, I know. I need it. You got to give it to him. I need that moment. I needed it today, guys. All right, let's have an action follow-up news item here, Brian. You remember it was like a week or two we talked about the NASA Open Source Summit? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, it happened. Uh, NASA's Open Source Summit occurred, and uh, it was was kind of interesting. So it it took... What? Everything changed. Well, it took place March 29th and 30th. And here's an interesting bit. Remember, we were kind of like, well, what's really the core thing about? Yeah. And I have it here. Uh, it, by the way, speakers included uh, Chris DeBona from Google, uh, Pascal Fennett from uh, Mozilla Labs, and Bob Suter, the vice president of Open Systems at IBM, and also Red Hat CTO Brian Stevens were also there. Uh, so here's the thing is... Uh, NASA's legal expert got up on stage and uh, he he explained what part of the problem is, is NASA releases things as technically open source, but the license that they release under is incompatible with every other known open source software license. (laughs) Oops. So NASA wanted to hold this from what I'm gleaning from the reports. And NASA wanted to hold this to let contractors know that, hey, if you're going to work for NASA, you need to know that what you work for, when you work for us, that code cannot be technically used by other open source projects right it's open source but they can't use it and you need to know that and there's a lot of legalese you need to work through that's what nasa came to the table with google and red hat they came to the table with you guys need to change this practice you You need need to change it and it needs to be a different license and you know uh here, their response to that was, is, well, look, here's our issue is, uh, and this is, again, this is NASA's uh, chief um, legal expert guy that's involved with their IT side. He said, uh, all software, open source or not, is commercial software. There is no such thing as non-commercial software, period. Mm-hmm. All software leads to some kind of commercial use, whether it's for monetary compensation or whether it's for some kind of softer compensation, like recognition or publicity or whatever. All these types of compensations have mm, some kind of true. value to the developer. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's totally true. That's well, yeah, that's true. But so what? Okay. I mean, it doesn't make it doesn't make any difference in this moment, but it's true. Uh, DeBona, Chris DeBona was up there, and he went on to say that uh, he also. I'll, I'll read a funny comment here, but actually, I'll read the funny one first. Read the funny one because that's the one I like. He uh, he said that uh, NASA shouldn't be afraid to blow up some robots once in a while. Unmanned flights can be. Uh, a little more risky. They can afford to take more risks, DeBona said. People say, we don't have, we don't want to endanger manned flights. Well, we don't have to endanger lives. Open source software comes from unknown sources. But put it on an unmanned flight with robots. See how it does. That was his point. <laughs> but he actually made a, he made a better point later on, because I think that was a little tongue-in-cheek. He said, uh, honestly, if uh, NASA could uh, help the community and, and, and get working with open source, uh, that would sp- that would sp- speed up the transfer of technology to other aerospace programs in the government. It would also sp- uh, accelerate NASA's interaction with the uh, you know independent market, and so the very that very streamlining and reduction of overhead would be tax savings for the U.S. Yep. people. So that would be a more a net benefit. That would be, be a, a more fiscal reason to use yeah. open source software. Yeah. So that was it was an interesting thing. Uh, they basically they walked away and said, look, the rules you guys need to look at them. Um, I don't really know how much they got through to NASA, but maybe soon we'll see Linux powered the space, uh, the future space shuttles or something. It would be really groovy, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. All right. Now, this next one is just kind of an interesting note. It's an implication and fallout from Samba's switch to the GPL3. Apple is ditching Samba in flavor of their own custom design program in OS X Lion. Yay. Now, I mention this just because it's, it's interesting to see Apple, who, remember, they have uh, a ton of interest and the majority interest in WebKit. Yep, and uh, they, which you know, every web browser is pretty much using except for Firefox now, and they also uh, are the uh, rights owners of uh, Cups, the printing system that every Linux distribution uses. Yep, they have a lot of little open source projects that they're actually involved in. So yep. it's interesting to a see a lot them of the free BSD tools are bundled with yeah. OS X. Yeah, they yeah. work on a lot of those, and it's interesting to see as Apple uh, is stepping away from Samba due to GPL three. And there's, it's, you know, it's not the only open source project that switched to GPL three. Now maybe that's just fine. Who, you know, maybe the implications here are nothing, nothing more than it's going to be an annoyance for users when I'm sure there's going to be certain compatibility issues. The new technology will be called like SMBX or something like that, and it won't have the capability of working as a domain controller, but it's going to supposedly do all the basic stuff. I think it's because they want to also build this functionality into iOS, and they're just going to write one one backend system service for both. But I don't know. 
it's just interesting to see them step away because of the GPL3. Yeah. I don't see why they have to step away because it's GPL3. Now, I've we've talked about GPL3 versus GPL2 in the past. And, and I was very clear at the time, for those of you who don't remember that time frame, um, I prefer GPL2 over GPL3. I think it's a better license. I love GPL2. GPL3, I was like, ah, oh, it's like GPL2, but uh, it adds some stuff I don't care for. Yeah. So I get it. I get not being a huge fan of GPL3, but I don't actually see... A single thing in GPL3 that would make it so Apple could not use Samba, the current version of GPL of Samba, that is GPL3 in OS 10 they, or iOS. They've hung on Samba 3 to avoid the GPL3. And I don't know, it's possible, it's brought up in the article that, you know, the GPL3 does have specific um, mentions of conveying software patents and things like that. Um, and, you know, Apple's pretty patent happy. There's I there's know. nothing there. There's nothing. Story nonetheless, just because Samba is a major open source project and um, the GPL is a major open source license. Honestly, the only thing I think that will come out of this is it's going to be that much harder for people to share files with their with Macintoshes running in That's their, in their place of business. Yeah. It's just going to make it's just going to mean whatever the next version of OS 10 is, is going to not play nicely with Linux and Windows going forward. So this next story you pointed me out to, and boy, does this make me a happy boy. Now, <laughs> a, a while back, like like a, like a last season midway, we did uh, our favorite open source projects that we were currently loving. Yeah. And Gedit was both on our list. So now, so yeah, we I got to let's just jump into this. They're working on these these guys, these guys, and I, I think the the Calabra is is who we've talked about in the past, before in the past. They sponsored this work, yeah. Are, are sponsoring this work. They took Gedit, which is and cool. they tied it in to the telepathy backend for collaboration services. What this is, bring up that screenshot again. Literally, if you're seeing the video version, the area on the left, that's your instant messaging contacts list the area on the right that's your gedit edit window so it's real-time collaboration it's in gedit real-time collaboration using existing linux software stacks basically tying in gedit to telepathy that's really cool awesome that is really i cool. want this so it's very like, bad it's like google docs but right built into your friendly desktop editor you know that collaboration aspect of google docs Right, right. Yeah. Now, and you, you tie this together maybe with some Dropbox or a couple other Dude, things. And, yes! Oh my goodness, Woo! you could have a rock and rock and setup. I, I think this is I phenomenal. use this a lot. I use collaborative editing for all of our show notes. And so Or or we set up, you know, because we, we have fast connections here and we have servers that run the whole all the time. So we have Good. one yeah. central machine yeah. with all of our documents on it with an instant messaging account that we all are friends with. Yes. And so then we can oh, all like interact a, with like that. Like a dedicated account. A that's dedicated server that's constantly running. There's so many cool things to do with that. I know this is not the first time someone's done, you know, collaborative well, document editing, no, look, but uh, it's just such a cool way to see the technology fuse together. They've got the great tools. This is this is why. This is the very, very core reason why you want to take something like an instant messaging framework and break it out from the core application. You don't want just Pigeon or something else to be the end-all be-all that yeah. you can set status Once on. Once you have a back-end, you have essentially a, an internet messaging system. That every system, every application on the system can use. It doesn't have to be chat. So great. So I, you know, obviously, so that those patches are not obviously in the trunk of Gedit currently that I that I can tell. But it's such a cool patch going I on. I or huge maybe amount of mad props. Or you know? Whether this specific uh, iteration of it gets into the main Gedit trunk or not, uh, as soon as it becomes available, I'm going to be using that. Now I have talked a little bit about uh, Gobi before, and I believe I got alerted to it because I think it's the uh, uh, collaboration tool that the Ubuntu project uses. And Gobi, G-O-B-B-Y, yeah. is a, a real-time collaration editing server. But yes. it, it requires a local LAN uh, back-end server, I it's think. It's a little different. Maybe there's hosted versions of it. It's, a, check it's a little out. different, but it's very, very cool also. Let's get into a couple of quick stories here, because then we've got an April Fool's Roundup coming up oh, yeah. of open source April Fool's. Uh, Holy moly. So this is a, just a quick one. It's, it's branded as the Ubuntu App Developer Week. And, you know, it's really, it's, I guess it's to get developers in there working on software specifically for the Ubuntu desktop. But look, yeah. what it really is, though, is things like GStreamer and, you know, Phonon and, and Python. UML and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's stuff that affects yeah. all Linux desktop stuff. You know, so basically, so it's, uh, what's the dates on that? It's next week, right? Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, let me see. I, have, I think it's next Monday through Friday. Here, and it's April 11th, uh, 11th through, through the 15th. All right, okay. so it's really simple. They have an IRC room set up. Mm -hmm. Uh, they've got a bunch of other That's what like, I like. websites and stuff you can go yep. to. And the whole idea is during set periods of time, you can go in to learn about things through virtual presentations yep. and some very cool technologies. If you're new to software development, there's it looks like there's going to be 
several mm -hmm. sessions on like quickly, which quickly is a little tiny tool that builds like a, like a framework, uh, set of source code for making a nice Python application. Ah. So if you want to learn how to make Python applications, yeah, and this it, would be great. And, and it, it's neat. It's a great, it's a great choice because it ties in with so many other desktop Linux technologies yeah. so nicely. And you do not have to be an Ubuntu user to really enjoy this. No, it's they, just really, if you want to start working on open source software on the yeah. desktop, this, this is a great way to do it. Cause you've got, you're going to, what I like is they've organized people to help in the chat. Room. It's so great. That's the nice aspect. Super to it. cool. So seriously, uh, you know, check it out. They're not, I don't, as far as I know, going to be covering a little software creator, which is a travesty. Oops, their their mistake. Everyone from Canonical needs to get on top of that. You know, they got one week to get that sorted out. But uh, uh, but otherwise, it looks great. Now, before we get into April Fool's pranks, uh, one story came out this week that I heard from a lot of you on, <coughs> and uh, it's got Brian a little worked up. It's not so much worked up as amused. Bemused is yeah, the right bemused. way to put it. Well, uh, Elementary OS released their Jupiter version of their new Linux desktop. The Jupiter <sighs> version. Um, now, now, of course, I think people made the connection Jupiter Broadcasting. They decided, let's get a hold of the guys and see what they think about this. Oh, it's so much more than that. Uh, so here's the thing. We uh, started many years ago a yeah. project. Yeah. Originally, it was called Lasnix. Now, that project was going to be a little Linux distro um, that was, you know, kind of inspired by some of the changes that we wanted to see in, in the Linux desktop sure. and Linux Action Show. So, Linux Action Show, Nix. We thought, why not? Lasnix. And then we realized that's that's not a great name. We don't like that name at all. So, we went with Jupiter. And in fact, we were going to call it Jupiter One. Uh, and it was going to be the, the Jupiter Broadcasting's official Linux distribution. Yep. We created some great artwork around it. Um, you know, basically, you know, some of some of you guys who were involved in uh, watching the shows and, and the chat rooms and the like, you've you were heavily involved with that, creating some really great artwork yeah. for it. And um, it's kind of weird looking at this. It is, yeah. Because I mean, we eventually decided not to do it because our car probably shows, but. 80 to 90 percent of their design decisions were design decisions that we laid out in a design decision document that literally was Jupiter OS. Yeah. Here's what we want out of it. And, and down to the specific applications they're using, where they're lay, putting toolbars, um, the type of themes they're using everything well except for the web browser we didn't have that web browser pick no midori. we didn't have we didn't have but midori wasn't really kicking yeah, back then no, exactly. which is a great browser um so i think that's a little funny what here's what i think is funny about it i don't really care it doesn't bother me at all uh, i think i think more power to them uh, if they want to go ahead and use it um but uh <coughs> it is funny though i think it's funny that they did not do a bing search uh, or a Google search or whatever kind of search you want to search uh, for the idea of Jupiter Linux before they went ahead and do that. So let's just out of curiosity, let's go ahead and Google search this real quick. Oh, okay. Jupiter I, Linux. What, you what, what comes up? Oh. Um, yep. So the first is ours. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, boy, look at that. 2007. Uh, the second is a, a Linux an Arch Linux review from the Linux Action Show. Look at us go. Um, <laughs> there, there's Jupiter Broadcasting. Wow. Then there's... Uh, so, so, yeah. So... Um, Oh. Uh, then there's me talking about Linux sucking. Uh, oh, what? So pretty much there's nothing about them on it anywhere. Huh. But uh, uh, but yeah, it's all about us. So seriously, guys, <laughs> before you name an entire project, which is a no, cool project. No, it's just the release. It's just the release. But come on. Come on, guys. Elementary it's really, OS. The... It's really cool. But no one knows it's Elementary OS. You go to their website, it just says, Jupiter. Yeah, I, so I got a couple of links in the show notes. Search first, dude. It actually looks like it could be kind of slick. I got, it does. Uh, I, that's the thing is I think they did a great job, except they didn't actually look at what they should name it first. And, you know, I mean, let's be honest. So far, I... I'd be like someone coming out like right now. It'd be like Win Microsoft releasing a new version of Windows called Windows Mac or something like that. Like they just never thought of it before. There's something out there already. Or there's some. There's another project someone wanted to make. Yeah. Um, I guess... That's all I got for that. I, guess, I just yeah. think it's funny. I would check it out. I, it might end up being... Wouldn't it be funny? I downloaded it. I haven't installed it on anything yet. I did too. Same thing. I Wouldn't it be funny though if Ubuntu 11.04 is sort of a misstep and things like this little project, which has the Ubuntu Software Center in it and things yeah. like that, just sort of are just at the right time to take advantage of that. That's we'll very see. possible. Now, why don't we wrap up some of the... With uh, the news doc with some of our favorite open source April Fool's moments because it just Please. passed. It's the third today of April. And while we're recording this... Lay it on me. 
Now, uh, the OMG Ubuntu guys had one of my favorite, I think I've seen in a long time. They did a, uh, they had a little error that came up when you first loaded the website on April Fool's. It said, error, fatal X11 failure, falling back to terminal mode. And then after it would load for a minute, and that's all the white you have there. I'll get the white out of your face because I, there we go. There we go. There we go. So we would fall back and you'd have uh, Ubuntu, OMG Ubuntu's website in a, in a, in a, terminal isn't that great <laughs> april 1 at ubuntu 1 yeah, yeah so that was a good april fool i like that that's um, fantastic also the pc linux os guys got uh had a fake government seizure warning up on their website that the fbi had come in and and seize their domain google of course had their uh, gmail nice. motion i got a whole uh, list here of open source uh, april fool's pranks that i'll throw in here but b man i think you found our favorite uh yeah so so uh, we're not going to talk about the canterbury project thing if you guys haven't oh, heard yeah, about right. canterbury project go search for it okay basically so open susa arch right. uh, a bunch of other distros they they replaced their their front websites with the canterbury project which was this uh, idea that they were all going to merge together it was like it was like all of the yeah. not ubuntu and fedora distros right, right. got together yeah. and we're going to make yeah. canterbury right. they were going to combine the best aspects of all their distros yeah. into one mega I distro i forgot about that but i like and, that and and, and i'm like dude I kind of want that. Like, is, I, I want that idea. The problem is it doesn't pass the sniff test right away. So that's no, why I didn't make it's, my... It's obviously wrong. It was obviously a joke, but yeah. I thought it was I thought it was a delightful idea. I threw it out on Twitter. I'm like, man, am I, am I weird? Am I the only one who actually wants this April Fool's wild. joke? And uh, man, the amount of responses I got from you guys, that was basically, yes, I know it's an April Fool's joke and but that I makes me that. cry that hmm. it's an April Fool's I'd joke. I'd be curious to see what they could pull off if you brought in the best aspects of everything. But that's not the April Fool's joke that I want the most. What I want the most is the Nokia N0. Yeah, check this out. Now, it's got uh, a pretty slick looking hardware device. You look at it first, you're like, oh, kind of looks like a Nokia device. Oh, that looks like Mego on there. Yep. It's, something it's a little running different, Mego. Something different about that keyboard, though. That keyboard, the idea would be it's an AMOLED keyboard. So the, the screen, there's a screen on physical keys meaning that every key is what visually that, programmable. Yeah, what was that big one called? That big keyboard that uh, had the oh, programmable... It wasn't the transformer. It was the something or Chat other. room, do you, the Optimus? The Optimus. The Optimus, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, where they had a couple of keys that were programmable. Yeah. Well, yeah. this one is... Every, the idea is every single key is user programmable AMOLED keys that so are still physical. So you get the physical. best of a touchscreen and yeah. physical keys. Yeah, awesome. I love that. And also now, they nailed the, uh, the Nokia look. Here's the thing. Theoretically, that, that could work. Um, but if you scroll down a little bit... Uh, um, uh, where is that? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Nokia N0 comes bundled with Mego operating awesome. system and Duke Nukem Forever video game. That's when it was like, oh, not only is this really pie in the sky, they are now making fun That's of us. That's awesome. Yeah. The internal backup power source allows you to hot swap your battery, dry battery right away. Allows you to hot swap your dry battery away without powering off your device. Yeah. So many things about this are like, that is the perfect device, period. Now why can't they have a little mini battery strip in there <laughs> for like a 30-second swap? I, other than the Duke Nukem Forever thing, I would pay a serious premium for that device. So that That's was that one. was my favorite of the April Fool's ones because yeah. that one really just made me die a little inside. Because that one's worth checking out, too. Go I to want the show that one. For that. Yeah. We've got the roundups in there. Beautiful looking device. I, okay, now we just now we know. Now we know what we're waiting for. The, yeah. The N0. The N0. Yeah. You know, the problem is, Nokia, you know Nokia is going to have their... Because we know they're going to make... Uh, Amigo phone. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute. But um, we know it's not going to live up to that. We know it's not going to even be half of that. We know for like 10 years nothing's going to live up to that. And that's that makes me so what's sad. So, what's so aggravating about it is somebody out there is able to just take everything we want and boil it down into one thing. And now maybe that is super, like you said, pie in the sky. But, oh. but it would, it, honestly, the technology is there for all of that. It, it like would it just be, be super expensive. Yeah. It yeah. would be like a, like a $1,500 phone. Yeah. But... The one phone you'd ever need. But come on, come on. People are going around spending, you know, $850 on a tablet. I wonder if those keys would draw too much power. Who knows? I don't know. Well, that's why you need double battery yeah, battery. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's right. Oh, man. All right, B-Man. Well, that's all the news for this week. <sighs> now, Brian, last week we mentioned we were to talk a little today about Mego. And we specifically, sure will. you brought in your N900 here. Yep. And uh, we've talked about the N900 a lot. You've used it as a MAMO device. 
but for for quite a while. I'm as the ev- operating system's been end of life. I'm the operating system's end of life. I'm a huge Mamo fan. It's a great Linux distribution. It's based on Debian. It's nice and powerful. Great multitasking. Good battery life. Jeez, what else could you ask Fantastic for? application framework. App Lots kit. of great apps available for it. Good repositories out there. I was a big fan of the old Nokia handsets, the N810s, N800s, N770s, sure. and now the N900 was great. It still is an amazing device. It's my favorite. Toy. I've got a lot of toys. I've got my Lenovo tablet here that's got the touch screens touch and the screen. power and it's got like 10 hours of battery life. It's a great device for, you know, running a Ubuntu and filling it with comic books. And I have all sorts of fun with that, but that's not my favorite. My favorite's the N900. Portable as heck. It's fast as hell. Uh, it's got an amazing screen. It's got the same basic resolution as like the iPhone 4 with the Retina display that and came out like two years later. A physical keyboard. Physical keyboard, USB on it. I mean, it's it's just phenomenal. It's got a little micro SD card in there. So I've got a total of, uh, I want to say, you know, 60 some odd gigs of storage on here. That's nice. It's fantastic. So, but the main thing is, is you're held up by the OS. I'm held up by the future OS. Future development. Exactly. So, so obviously I got to make the jump to Mego. Or, and 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 that's been helped out recently. Recently, they've come out with the Mego Developer Edition for okay. handsets. Okay. Now, if you're if you're curious about how to get going on this, just go on over to Mego. I believe it's Mego.com, or just do a search for Mego. N900, and you will, find, you will find instructions for how to get it up and running on here. Now, um, over the last few weeks, I've been playing with it on and off. And? I've been, been using different builds, different, okay. which, excuse me, this this is, I'm drinking Sierra Mist right now. Burpee. Burpee. I'm Burpee. I got Dr. Pepper. A little, a, Dr. a, Pepper a little Burpee. Yeah. Um, now, some of the builds have been good. Some of the builds have been bad. Okay. Now, I was single booting for a while, uh, but everyone's saying, you know what? You got to dual boot. Dual booting's easier. It's easier to update everything. Really? Uh, yeah, dual boot, just, not single boot? That's what they're saying. So basically, the, basically, the idea is the micro SD card that is inside the 900, that will be formatted and partitioned to just hold Mego. And so you're, you're and then, dual booting Mamo and Mego. Exactly. Um, so, uh, so I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to give it a spin. That's where things really went south. Uh oh. Uh, the directions that are available for it just simply straight up don't work right. Uh, I, I'm not a full on retard, you guys. Uh, I will freely admit, uh, I sometimes retard it. Yeah. Like I sometimes see words written in front of me and do the opposite. You get them, wrong. You get them uh, wrong. Oftentimes. A little dyslexia there. I don't know. Over the last week. Yeah. I've tried so many times from scratch, reloading this entire device, wiping everything out, starting over, working in the forums, trying to get people to help me work through it. Uh, and it's just not working. Can I now, tell you my... Now, here, here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead and turn this little device okay. on. Okay. Uh, now, here you go. It's uh, powering up. Now, you don't really see it right here. I, I don't know if you can kind of see that. What you're seeing right there is U-Boot. Uh, let me see if I... There you go. It's like a little grub for... It's great. So I can do multi-booting off of this and, you know, little commands for, you know, booting off of the SD card slot, um, booting from Nolo, yeah, all sorts nice. of options. Well, it looks a little bit like Lilo, actually. I can't can't get anything to work on it. So um, I, I it's been probably three weeks since I've had a build of Mego actually functioning on here. Well, can I tell you, uh, I attempted to get it working on a netbook. Now, my first... My first sort of hopes about that were sort of quickly crushed when I realized, um, well, they don't plan to support the netbook edition anymore. So I went yeah. out and thought, well, I'll see what I can find. And it just, they did not look like they were in good state. So then I thought, well, maybe I can get something going in the emulator. And I found a guide on how to get Mego running in the emulator. And I started to go down this path, but it's pretty long. And then here's why I stopped. Uh, you get down there, and I found out that there's a lot of things in the 3D acceleration that just don't work. Just don't work in the in the emulator, and yeah. then so that's like what most of the handset UI relies upon. And then once you don't have that, you don't have most of the handset experience. Yeah, the handset the, using the emulator. So I've 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 got the emulator installed at yeah. home, and using the emulator works great if you are just trying to test out some basic development stuff. Like you are making an app that has no need for any hardware acceleration yourself, and that's all you want to test out is that. It works fine, um, which is great. It's a very useful thing for developers. However, I've noticed that the emulator is also very slow to it's start a, it's up. It's a QMU emulator. Yeah, it's very slow to start up. It's very slow to work. It's very, very pokey, even on incredibly fast machines. Even on my Core i7, it is crawling. So, you know, I just, it's not that fantastic. It's not currently running on the N900. I, I mean, it's I've, a bad state. It's in a you bad gotta, state right ask, now. You got to look. If you don't, if you can't run it very well in the emulator, you can't run it very well in the netbooks, and you can't run it very well in that on the really what the main handset. The shipping for it. What are you sticking on? 
Where? How is this? How is this even being worked on? I've got uh, so the only how are they real even working on Migo? The only real usable version of it I've got is an old version of Migo from several months back, running on OpenSUSE in VMware. Uh, so um, I grabbed oh, over at the OpenSUSE build service. So uh, SUSEgallery.com has one up there that you can grab and download. It's a little out of date, okay, but. It works. That's the only current one or semi-current one, which is still Jeez. several months old, that I've been able it's to no use. Good. Now, that said, before everything went tits up on this N900, yeah. I was able to get Mego running with phone services. It did work. I was able to make and receive phone calls. I was able to do a, a lot of the phone stuff. It had a contacts thing. I mean, it, it had stuff there. Um some notes. Um, since I obviously don't have it up and running right now, here's here's some notes on what I found. Okay, lay it on us. On the N900, it's slower than molasses in December. It was not fast. I mean, to say that it was slow is an understatement and is almost insulting to things that are slow. Like sloths are like, whoa, whoa really don't group bad? me in with, with Mego on an N900. Is it really dude. that bad? It was hideous it was like you remember when um uh the first android phone the came out yeah. the the t-mobile g1 yeah yeah and you remember how that was just pokey like you'd you'd go to swipe the screen and, and it you'd would go like jit, this jit, jit, jit. and you'd be done and it'd be like junk chunk, yeah, chunk. Yeah. and we made fun of android yeah, for that but it got better this was about that speed now the okay. thing is the n900 is capable we have it running memo right now right. and it runs right great that's gotta be, be driver optimized i can run KDE 4 on top of MAMO with all the massive amounts of juice that that sucks in and the memory that it just gobbles up and that as slow as it runs with all the plasma widgets it's and faster. anti-aliasing and rotating that was is faster? significantly faster than so Migo that's gotta be an acceleration issue. See, this is what I'm saying and this is why it's no good not to have it in the emulator as well. Right. So so this has been a problem. So um, now what this does is all this mean? a serious handicap. I'll tell you exactly what it means. It's a serious handicap on the future development and future possibilities of Migo. It's got to be. I mean, I hate to be Mr. Reactionary on this, but both of us tried to get some working... Wait, wait. You hate to be Mr. Reactionary? I do, but... I like being Mr. Reactionary. I think you like being Mr. Well, Reactionary I, sometimes. No, I don't want to be, but it's oh, what it is, man. Right. We both tried to work on it on separate... You, went, you went on physical hardware, I went on the emulator and the netbook route, and they both ended in frustration. Now, that said, these are development releases of it. The problem that makes... The thing that makes me concerned is that I feel like we're a long way... Oh, we're a way into the development of, dude, of these things. No, we're 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 not even started. We're not even we're, off the ground yet. There's, we're supposed to be though. We're yes. supposed to be. Right now, I mean, right now we're supposed to be at a point where the first Mego devices were supposed to have already shipped. This is literally the launching ground for developers to be able to start using this thing, and we're not there. And we're not there. So they they've made progress in the aspect of using it on an N900 as a phone is doable. It oh, is. Yeah. I mean, it's totally functional. The battery life is atrocious uh, and the performance is not good. We've got we've got some clips here of some folks who have There got, we go. You can get it working. You can totally get it working. And uh, it you know, it's just it's not in a very good state yet. Man, that's running so much faster than I got it running. I don't he know. might have we'll see he probably has this is 6 months old. So this this video is 6 months old. So he has at least a 6 month old build there. <laughs> So I don't know what the difference so is. So that's the thing is you know we could be just dealing with bugs. We could be dealing with issues in the process. That's that's totally fine. So I don't want to judge it. But yeah, here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, you can't make a final judgment, but it is extremely worrying. Here's what's here's what's worth noting. When I did have it running and it looked okay. I mean it wasn't didn't look great. It didn't look bad, but it looked okay. I mean I would accept it as as you know my OS. Honestly, I don't think Android looks very good. So, you know, I think it looks okay. So honestly, I put it in the same ballpark. Um, the thing that got me though was there's not really a whole lot of software available. Now I know that it's not shipping on a device, right? But when you come from Mamo, like if if I have an N900 and I'm dual booting and I've yeah. got Mamo, yeah. Uh, Chris, just for just for kicks and giggles, uh -huh. go ahead and toggle over here. This is the current version of Firefox 4 uh, running on Mamo on nice. an N900. It runs Firefox fast. Firefox 4 even. Firefox huh? 4, ah, cool. syncing of all your <clears throat> stuff to your yeah, desktop yeah. version of Firefox. It runs fast. It runs glorious. It's new software. It's modern software being made for the N900 and Mamo. An end of life kill distribution. Go ahead and switch back over to me again here. This is sync term. This is the best BBS client in the world just got ported over to N900 and MAMO. Now, yeah, that's these are you're able to draw on the Linux desktop applications for your apps right, for MAMO. Right, but you can do that with MIGO too. It's just we don't have anything. So, mm. from a developer perspective, from a pro right. user perspective, right. I'm looking at it and thinking, well, I can dual boot 
And I did. Well, I kind of single booted and then reflash and tried to dual boot and failed. But hey, I'll call that dual booting. Um, I don't want to. Now, now I don't even care. Like, I don't care. You lost interest. I lost interest. Well, I now at least legitimately have no interest. They're going to have to come out with something amazing. They're going to have to be like, oh, by the way, have you heard of, have you heard no, of Mego? I, you can virtualize 14 different OSs inside of your phone and it's amazing. Or something just rocking awesome. Like or I'm just not going to care. You'll probably check it out in a while. It's going to be a while. Yeah. I've got... You know, there's there's new Fedora coming up. There's new Ubuntu coming up. There's all sorts of stuff going on. I hey, gotta I gotta download and or I gotta install the Jupiter, Jupiter OS. Yeah, you know, because yeah. the thing that we made. Oh, I mean the thing that the other people made. You know, so the thing is, there's no rush, man, and that's part of the yeah. other problem. There's no rush to try. To I don't hit. care. Yeah. I don't care. Hmm. I, this is still a great device. The N900, I'm going to be clear on this, is still a great phone. Nokia still makes great phone hardware, and they have, and I don't see any reason to upgrade. The OS or the hardware. So the, the N900 is fast. Yeah. Amazing camera. Stellar camera. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do in 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 a year when uh, there's maybe less interest? Right now you're benefiting from the fact there's not See, a good competitor thing. to that. See the thing is though, there's still new software being ported and released for N810s, hmm. the old tablets. I mean, it, I mean, but granted, this is that, end of life. Yeah, it is. It is on yeah, the I mean, downward trend. Once, There's no doubt. Once an actual Mego device ships, that's probably when the tides will change. Maybe that's change that's it. when things will. That's when things will change. We'll but then again, um, the only hint of a Mego device really shipping is an April Fool's prank that we've gotten so far. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So I don't, I, I don't. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know what? We've got something great here in in, in Mamo distribution and uh, and some of the compatible hardware. I we'll see, right? I you guess. know, I I just don't care. I'm just going to keep using the uh, the old stuff. I guess time uh, will that tell for a while. But uh, hey, you know what? If you've had different experience, let us know. Hop over at JupiterCalling.com and and throw a little uh, uh, FYI in there. What happened with you? Before we go, I wanted yeah. I wanted to announce uh, that Jupiter Broadcasting recently became a Think Geek affiliate. And if you want to pick up, like they have an April Fool's sale going on and stuff like that, I'll put a link in the show notes. And uh, I think we get a semi-decent commission off anything you buy from there. So that'll I'll put that in there. As well. I like commissions. I just remembered that we had a little Think Geek thing, and everybody loves Think Geek, right? Everybody does. Uh, so you know what, B man, I think I'm gonna re I think I'm gonna refocus my uh, attention from uh, me go on a netbook, and I'm I'm gonna I think my name ne- my next netbook reload is gonna be a Jolly Cloud. Really? You're going to go back to the Jolly Cloud? I think so. Route, huh? Well, it's just I, I wanted to go something Mego so I could learn that uh, environment, but you know, they've they've killed the they've killed that for the netbook. Yeah. Um I I haven't seen like a good open source spin up of it, or, you know, a, a community version, so yep. I, I think I'm going to check out Jolly Cloud. There seems to be some steam behind it. You know, I'm doing basically I'm doing the same thing kind of here, except on the Lenovo with the with the touch screen and everything. I'm focusing between now and Ubuntu's launch on the next version yeah. of Ubuntu they got with the multi-touch stuff. With the it. multi-touch stuff, I'm going to really see how far they can take the multi touch because honestly that's that's pretty exciting it's um, interesting to I'm, see I'm as, hyped for as we learn more about Mego and as we get our uh as we get more information and we see where they're going we get more and more concerned and it's we're both really huge Mego honestly fans, i'm so. not even concerned anymore i'm just bored like I, at this point in my mind Mego is more dead than Mamo, which Mego killed Mamo. So I, I don't even know how that works. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, Mamo ships. Mamo's out there. We've got source available. It's pretty underwhelming. We've got tons of applications available. Yeah. We've got hardware acceleration. Mamo's underwhelming. Great. That's what it is. Mamo's not interesting. Yeah. Mamo, yeah. And they've got a lot of people working on this. Mamo is more interesting. You're right. Well, there it's, you go. Yeah. There you that's, have it. That's the thing. I just don't That's care. unfortunately our look. Hey, yeah. we tell you like it is, folks. If it's yeah. not good, it's not good. I'm trying to figure out. Let's liven this up a little bit. Like, right. No, nah, I don't I don't give crap. All right, Ryan. Here you go. That, that wraps up our quick look at a thing that we don't really care about right now. Hey everybody, Jeremy here to tell you a little bit about another show here on our network, Jupiter at Night. Airing live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 8 p.m. Pacific, this show is a great way to get info and entertainment on the topics that matter to our audience. We cover tech news, movies, space, science, world events, gaming, and all sorts of crazy junk. So join us live for Jupiter at Night and hang out in our active chat room every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live. Or grab the downloaded version on demand. And that brings us to the end of this week's epic mega all-star broadcast of power. Now, wow, dude. we got a lot of stuff coming Wait, up still. Before you get that, can I apologize? I totally <sighs> dissed on Schmigo. I did not mean to diss on Schmigo. Not Schmigo, but Schmigo from Smigo. Open Susa. Smigo. I mentioned, I know I like Schmigo. You know, it's got an L at the end, you're right. Uh, it's, it is their take on the Mego Netbook UX. It's their continuing effort, but we'll see where it goes. I'm not sure. 
I haven't heard much from them, well, but I did no, no, forget this, about Smeagol. Yeah, you can go. I believe you can pick that up from uh, uh, the SousaGallery.com. I'm gonna put a link in the I show notes. I think so. Anyway, I'll put a link in there. Anyway, if, if not, I know there. I know there are some uh, uh, some Mego uh, based open Sousa distribution. I interrupted your face because you were right. about to say we were ha- we're gonna have somebody on the studio. We got uh, some uh, the makers of Real Studio, uh, Real Software. We're gonna have the CEO of the company, Jeff Perlman. He's gonna be on the show next week. Yeah, they uh, make live a, in studio. They make a nice, easy to use uh, IDE. For developing under Linux, yeah, and it's actually kind of cool because they they give away if you want if you're making open source software, you get the license for free. It's commercial and it's closed source, but you know what I mean. They they, they give you they give you some heads up, and they're going to be giving away. Uh, I believe it's two copies oh, of cool. uh, of Real Studio. That's right. Um, uh, on the show, so that's well, pretty awesome. What's rad is uh, you know when we have- no they haven't dictated what the giveaway is, so me and Chris get to come up with something truly heinous for you guys probably, to do probably feats of strength though. yeah Man. i'm thinking feats of strength yeah. like video of you guys lifting things just yeah. deadlifting yeah. who can deadlift the most ridiculous yeah. thing yeah. or something yeah. that's Maybe what we've juggle got crt monitors um it's really neat because we brought that's not a bad we idea. brought them on what three years ago when they announced they were releasing Jeez. releasing for linux Maybe it might even be more than that so it's cool to have them come back on now and just touch see base how and see it's where been at. going yeah. and if you guys have any questions for them uh definitely you know chime in toss us an email or go over to the uh forum over jupiter colony dot com yeah and just talk to us in there about what you'd like to ask us uh with them us to ask them nice we well, you know it's the end of the show when my mouth stops working that's good because that's when well except for yeah hmm. yeah gotta, hmm. maybe we'll just walk you can walk it off you know burp, 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 I, I can, yeah i can do the i can do the mouth flappy mouth lippy thing yeah, yeah that ah, might ah. work out uh so okay we got the facebook's too and that's a good place to check out because we're going to be probably posting more information as linux fest gets closer linux fest northwest uh 2011 over, man go over to facebook.com slash jupiter broadcasting also where we announce new and here's the thing releases. here's the thing about linux fest northwest 2011 that is the specific place in time that the future will be introduced oh i have no reason to believe that at this point but you never know when the future is going to be introduced and i believe you're not going to get that one wrong if you're predicting in the future the future is going to happen I don't think, I think that's a solid. It is going to be unveiled right there. Brian Lunduke calls it right here, April 3rd on the Linux Action Show Live. That's right. April 31st in Bellingham, Washington. No, I mean, you're calling it on the 3rd of April. No, I'm calling it, but it's going to happen then. It's going to happen. It's it's not going to happen until then. Right. It's it's it's, going to happen at Linux Fest. It's April. Yeah. All the kids are off at spring break. Nothing's happening until then. But I'm just saying, it's going to be sometime after lunch. Because I'm going to need to have a few beers in me first. So you're saying but there if, will be if you're, future if you're in that. Bellingham, yeah. Washington for Linux Fest Northwest between April 30th and May 1st, you will witness the future? Yeah, the complete future. Well, that's good. The whole thing. Man, I'm glad I'm already going to be there because the way the schedule works out, I'm going to be there. So Dude, works right? Out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Good call, man. Yeah, that's what I do. So you're going to probably want to be there. Now, uh, if you're not there, we're going to do our best to stream a lot of it live. So, you know. There's that. Know, yeah. But you're going to miss out on going and grabbing a beer. Mm-hmm. With the Jupiter Broadcasting crew, mm. we're gonna be there. I mean, I know you're all gonna want to tune in because Jeremy's gonna be there. Jeremy's so, gonna be there. That's probably Jeremy. And here's the great thing about that: if you watch other Jupiter Broadcasting shows, uh, you know that Jeremy does not know uh, Linux from his own feet. Well, he does have a, one Linux box now. Yeah, it's cheating. He's yeah. never actually set it up. Well, no, he uses it for Did chat. Did he install it? He's got it. Did he install I, I Linux on old, it? No, well, you, I you set it, it up for I him. You're like, it. Jeremy, click on the thing that's this color. That's what you told him. So here's the great thing. He's going to be there. He's going to be there. If Jeremy, Jeremy from not the Linux Action Show, from other Jupiter Broadcasting Shows is there, and you're not there, boy, I'm just saying. You like Linux. So and you like Linux. That would be embarrassing. Big time embarrassing. <laughs> All right, that's all I got. That's all, all right. I got. Do all the things that we told you to do. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, because they're going to be great. And while we're at it, let's, let's leave them with one more little bit of instructions because this is the most important one. You can catch us live every Sunday at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific over at jblive.tv. Right. And then this episode releases on demand in just about any format you could want over at jupiterbroadcasting.com every single Sunday evening. That is just phenomenal. Well, there you have it. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Linux Action Show. And when you're done here, go buy a B3 server. We'll see you next week. Later, guys. That's my microphone. For the moment. This week on the Linux Action Show. 
We've stayed up all night by the light of fire, armed with only our amazing intellect to load Mego on all the various devices we can get our hands on. Find out if Mego is the platform of the future, or yesterday's Brian's mouth is filled with spit. <laughs> all right, here we go, B man, B man, B b b b man, B man, b b b b b man. The roof off of the industries. Boom, 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 boom. The industries are going to be unable to handle my roof blowing. Oh, Mr. Mego. Boom, 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 boom. I want to load you. Boom, 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 boom. Why won't you load? I think your singing is helping. All right, good. Yeah. <laughs>